by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. The head of CBS has stepped down after more women accuse him of sexual misconduct. I'm Laura Podesta with details on Les Moonves's departure and what this company is now doing to make amends. And there are new trail and forest road closures due to the Bacon Rind fire south of Big Sky. Coming up, how the rekindled fire is affecting backcountry travel. Just ahead of 6.30 on this Monday, Chelly and Missy O'Malley with you. Matt has our forecast in a moment. Meantime, our top story this half hour, Leslie Moonves is out at CBS. His reg resignation came yesterday after a New Yorker article reported new sexual misconduct allegations against him. CBS's Laura Podesta has our details. CBS chairman and CEO Leslie Moonves resigned yesterday just hours after six new women came forward accusing him of sexual misconduct. A report by the New Yorker magazine details incidents which allegedly took place between the 1980s and early 2000s. According to the magazine, they include claims that Moonves forced them to perform oral sex on him, that he exposed himself to them without their consent, and that he used physical violence and intimidation against them. Moonves released a statement late last night saying untrue allegations from decades ago are now being made against me that are not consistent with who I am. I am deeply saddened to be leaving the company. CBS Corporation and major shareholder National Amusement said Moonves and CBS will donate $20 million to one or more organizations that support the Me Too movement and equality for women in the workplace. The money will be donated immediately and will come out of any severance package Moonves may receive pending the results of an ongoing independent investigation. That investigation started after a separate New Yorker article in July detailed six other allegations. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Chief Operating Officer Joseph Ikeniello will serve as president and acting CEO while the board conducts a search for a permanent successor. Uh, back here at home, here's the latest in the Bacon Rind fire burning south of Big Sky. Firefighters say a small amount of rain over the weekend did help to keep that fire growth modest, but the blaze has led to new closures in parts of Yellowstone National Park and on the Custer Gallatin National Forest. Fire south of Big Sky listed at 3,700 acres. Uh, uh, access to the Gallatin River along 191 from North Park Boundary to Fawn Pass is now closed. Uh, Gallatin River access south of Fawn Pass Trail remains open. Several trails in both the park and the forest are closed. For a full list, visit our websites, kbzk or kxlf.com. One other reminder, by the way, Highway 191 near the fire in Yellowstone National Park now has a speed limit of 45 miles an hour due to smoke. Fire vehicle uh, being used in that area. The smoke is sometimes worse in the mornings and evenings, so be careful if you are driving through that area. Some good tips there. And as bears prepare for hibernation, they're looking for food. And firefighters working on the fires in Glacier National Park say they've become a safety issue in camp and along the fire lines. MTN's Nicole Miller has more about how crews are staying safe. From falling trees to difficult terrain, now another threat is bearing down on crews. There's been a lot of bears spotted out here, yeah. Uh, quite a few black bears, quite a few grizzlies. Uh, the crews have been reporting um, pretty much every day. Earlier this week, park officials briefed crews on how to use bear spray if they encounter a bear and measures to take not to attract bears. A lot of us are local, so we, we deal with bears quite often, um, but we try to in brief out of area resources, bear sprays available for those folks. And we, we really go over things like uh, packing in, pack it out, keeping uh, lunches, no food out on the line. Our instructions to all of our firefighters is you do not have any food that you take to the camp or take to the line. You don't ever leave any food in your tent. You always bring all your food, apple cores, all the refuse from your lunch back. Fire Information Officer Mike Cole says, along with keeping attractants like garbage and food away, firefighters must also keep away anything a bear could smell. Toiletries that may have some kind of an odor, like an underarm perspirant, um, lip balm, anything like that. You don't have any of that in your tent. All you have is your sleeping bag and your clothes, and that's it. As bears prepare to den, residents and recreationists are also urged to remove and secure food attractants to prevent conflicts. In Glacier National Park, Nicole Miller, MTN News. 
And we should mention at this time, no injuries have been reported. So that's a good thing. Good advice. It yeah. is their time of year to get ready to go for winter. Matt, it's kind of your time of the year to get ready to go for winter as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're kind of getting yourself geared up for it, too. I'm trying. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. I've been rummaging through our uh, refrigerator <laughs> looking for food. <laughs> that's what you're uh, <laughs> Temperature-wise, we're doing okay this morning. A little cool. 30s and 40s early on. 27 out toward West Yellowstone. Not where you were going with that. No, was it? it's not a, even remotely where I was uh, going. That's why I did it. Uh, temperatures into the 80s by the afternoon. We are looking at some wind as we go into the later part of the day. We'll talk about that, our chances of rain, and a cool forecast. That's all coming up in just now a few minutes. Now he's off to look for some ice you cream heard, sandwiches. <laughs> you heard it here first. Meteorologists also suffer from hyperphagia. Who knew? Uh, meantime, our top local story this half hour, vaccine experts from all over the nation made their way to Montana State University Saturday to talk about future vaccine development and infectious diseases. The event was free, open to the public, celebrated the legacy of famous vaccine scientist and former MSU alum, Maurice Hillman. Hillman is credited with saving more lives than any other medical scientist in the 20th century and worked on more than half of the vaccines most kids receive today. I think I, you know, I already, you know, in my own way, try to, to you know, try to emulate his work ethic and, um, it, you know, his his focus and trying to get the job done. And at the very end, he said, you know, it's success that matters, and that's how we feel as well. And in this week's monthly edition of Awaiting Child, MTN's Jenny Fick introduce, introduces us to a young man with big dreams, looking for a family to help him reach those dreams. Aaron is 13. He's a polite, soft-spoken young man. He likes golf and loves animals and trying new things. He's looking for a family to share life's experience. I want a dad and a mom and two dogs. Maybe a sister and a brother? Aaron is an eighth grader this year, but has already put some thought into his future. Be a fireman. He appears shy at first, but if you get him talking about basketball, you can see him light up. You say you play basketball, you watch the NBA? Yeah. Who's your favorite player? Uh, LeBron James. LeBron James, why? Uh, well, actually, no, Stephen Curry. Okay, all right, changing it up. Steph Curry, you shoot the three like Steph? Yep. Oh, that's the goal, okay. He's been playing since the sixth grade and wants to continue playing into high school. He's got some big dreams and a good attitude. Now he just needs someone to give him a shot. In Billings, Jenny Fick, MTN News. If you'd like to know more about Aaron, please contact Suzanne Braun at 406 657 3120, extension 3124. You can find that information on our websites. Love that awaiting child segment. Uh, nearly century old RL Winston Rod Company, a pioneer in the fly rod industry. Story featured in our new episode of Under the Big Sky, premiering later this month. Here's a preview. Under the Big Sky is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Vein Clinic and Markovich Real Estate. Whether you fish another brand name rod or not, anglers know the name of Winston. Winston is held very high in the world of fly fishing. It always has been. In 1929, Lou Stoner and Robert Winther started the company in San Francisco. R.L. Winston is a contraction of Robert and Lou, Winther and Stoner. One of Lou Stoner's great contributing gifts to the company was his realization that if you take the useless material out of the inside of a bamboo strip, then you allow the natural fibers more freedom to be more efficient. That was a game changer. We have in our museum the rod that broke the world casting record at that time of over 600 feet. So that put the company on the map. In the early 70s, Tom Morgan, he purchased the company and took on a business partner of Glenn Brackett. Glenn then helped Tom move the company up to Twin Bridges. These two gentlemen worked together as business partners until the very early 1990s, and David Ondaatje came on the scene. David is the current owner of the company. He's the longest standing sole proprietor of the company. There are other rod manufacturers out there who produce many, many more rods a year than Winston does, and they're fine fly rods. But the mystique of the Winston brand can't be measured. It has such a rich, long-lasting heritage and tradition.
Now to catch the full Winston Rod story, it will be airing Saturday, September 22nd, 6 p.m., 10.35 p.m., right here on Montana This Morning. Stay with us. Uh, in a moment, we head to North Korea to hear about the latest on the Patriotic Report card. But first, here's a sneak peek of what's coming up on uh, CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. We're along the coastline as Florence is expected to become the first hurricane to make landfall this year. Millions prepare for severe storm surge and flooding. And Dr. Agus is with us in Studio 57. He'll reveal the food and scheduling secrets proven to improve your child's grade. See you at 7.